there are persons that are in obstacle um, communication has been lost. They're asking for help. Can you stress? People are wondering why nobody's going to rescue them. Can you, someone from NEMA, stress the how difficult it is at this time and winds up to 180 miles per hour? Let me ask. I'll ask you a simple question. Winds of 180 miles an hour. If you are asked to go, if I ask you tomorrow to go and rescue those people, would you go? I don't work for anybody. So. Oh, okay. But, but I don't think anybody that fools to go. I don't have no idea where I could take my two kids. There's nowhere to go. We lost everything. We lost everything. We gave up our food, every food we had. Because the LSB was going to get on this flight. I'm supposed to get them. What am I to give them? Where's the humanity in that? Where's the care in that? I'm a behemoth citizen, my children. I'm a behemoth citizen. No guidance. What are we supposed to do? Sit here and die? Let's deal with those persons who are on the fringe of death. Many here feel abandoned by their own government. We are being treated wrong in our country. Exhaustion is now setting in. These are survivors of a storm that arrived nearly a full week ago. And if anything, conditions are deteriorating. The patience of the poorest and most vulnerable people here on this island is being tested to breaking point. I want to secure the women and children first. Overnight, the airport was finally being used as a shelter. Those seeking evacuation to other islands being allowed inside. Okay, well, a little earlier, about an hour ago, the first helicopter with my family members came in. It was my brother and sister-in-law, Charles Cook and Angela Cook. Um, my sister-in-law, their roof collapsed on her. She was trapped under the roof for 17 hours. My brother couldn't find her. He set the dog in there, and the dog is a shepherd, and he found her, but he couldn't lift the roof off of her. So she was stuck underneath that roof for 17 hours until there was a break in the storm, and the neighbors came over to help. Um, they took her across to their house. Today was the first day we've been able to get her out. She can't walk. Um, the second helicopter that came in brought in a family from down the shore that had been separated, and also my nephew's wife uh, was on the to um, where they have a home where all the families going to go to Eleuthera because there's nothing in Abaco. Um, Abaco is very bad right now. I, I, am, I am so disappointed in our defense force, and I don't know what trouble I'll get in for saying that, but I have to say that because they are looting terribly. They've already taken over one neighbor's house. They're coming by water. These people have guns, okay? Our defense force cannot handle this. We need help. I'm sorry, but we need help. This is a major catastrophe. My uh, nephew's wife was saying that it is scary. They're throwing rocks at you. They're breaking your windows that aren't broken. The houses that are still intact, they're trying to take them over. They're looting everything. I, I, it's, it's horrible, guys. It's, it's horrible. You know what they're doing now? There's boats in Florida lined off, ready to, to come with supplies. But they're telling them if they don't get a clearance from NEMA and Nassau, and when they bring this up, if it's not given to, to NEMA, for them to give out to the Asians, um, they have to pay duty. A friend of mine who had been buying stuff for him in Florida for four, 40 years, and my father before me, he got a letter this morning. If you are sending um, any donations to, to uh, Abaco or Freeport or we're distressed, the duty has to be paid before it leaves. Situation. We came in here on this bird, that bird, and another one right over there. We came in on three citations with intentions of dropping off relief supplies, helping to evacuate people. It is unbelievable to see how disorganized this shit show is. Un fucking believable. The people are hurting, the people are hungry, the people are tired, the people are frustrated, the people need to get out of there, and they hampered everything we did. We spent six hours in Nassau doing nothing but waiting. They finally gave us clearance, we got into Abaco, we got a whole bunch of stuff off, of Abba, uh, off the plane, evacuated two plane full of people, and then they canceled our clearance. What a joke. This island is in a total crisis. Like we got dead bodies. The morgue is full, over 200 and something dead bodies in the morgue. 
they still ain't got the rest that they even in the, the Haitian community where you got changes over here collapse on people I talking but every food store every every gas station every water depot everything gone ain't nothing here and people are looting people are looting left right and center we had we had two two gunshot incident where a young boy ended up killing himself uh shooting himself uh with that shootout and they are they, the government do not have no plan for evacuation no plan for evacuation and the american ambassador have been over here and told an American citizen that the government and them has no has, has no idea of uh, plan to evacuate the people. And turn around on top of that, they trying to rebuild schools and trying to make shelter. People don't want no shelter. People won't get off this island. This island is can look here. There's nowhere to rebuild this place in no month, no two months. It can take but three, four, five years before this thing can come back. This thing is totally disaster. Every community is destroyed. Houses with no roof. Everybody on this island, rich, poor, Asian, Bahamian, American, everybody, call, every everybody would own some finish. I lost everything that I own, gone. Me and my family do not have nothing. Miguel lost everything. We are in a serious predicament here in the Arab Coast. My name is Shannon Moxie, and I want everybody to know in the world the Bahamian government is lying. I just spent three days of hell in Abaco. And if they want to question me, they could question me because I retrieve a lot of bodies. You understand me? I saw bodies because I was on the ground. I was the only one that can search and rescue in Abaco and tell the defense force and the police then came. You understand me? There was an eight-year-old who drowned, and his mother came to me and asked me to go get his body. And I tried for three days to get it, until we finally get his body. I saw people trapped. I saw bodies, bodies swollen beyond recognition that I could not even recognize faces. There are over 200 bodies still trapped in the, in the mud area. And the government talking, but only 20 people died. But you all better stop playing, yeah? Y'all take y'all and teeth up this money what, what the people sending to, to the Bahamas to help the Bahamas. I'm telling y'all, this man menace, you will never see the Prime Minister office again after this one. You understand me? The people of Abaco need help. I was one of the lucky ones. We had the charter. Bahamas here to get out to get out of Abaco people. They are charging people to get out of Abaco. You have people in Abaco who are old and cannot work. Who do, do not have no money. The banks are down. You hear me? The, the banks are down. I am devastated. The tears I saw, I should have never seen. You understand me? And to my family, I'm okay. I'm broken, but I'm okay. But, I want to tell you something, man. Abaco is gone. Abaco is gone. And these men them coming on, on TV and things and saying, but how? But 60% damage? But you all better go back to school and learn your maths. I don't see Abaco ever coming back right now between the next year, the two to three years. Abaco is devastated. And if you all don't believe me, Ask the people of Abaco if they didn't see me on the front line in the storm, why is the storm is going trying to rescue people, trying to help people. If you all think I lying, I ain't coming on this camera trying to put on no show for nobody. You understand me? And I want you to know something too. I was in a situation I was dying. I almost was dead when my truck got lifted up off the ground from the wind. And the only name I could call on is Jesus. And I want you all to know it's power in the name of Jesus. That name is a powerful name. You can say what you want to say about me. But you all don't believe in God. It is a God. Because I still here. I could get to see my family. You understand me? I saw a woman who was trapped. Huh? The tornado take her. And the same place she land the roof land on her. She was three times the size. You understand me? 
this Benjamin government is lousy. Minister, you lousy. You lousy prime minister. You understand me? And then you want to get on TV when people ask you questions and you want to have an attitude? Where your sympathy is? Where your humanity is? Huh? Come on, man. To, uh, the official count now is at 30, I'm hearing. Um, and every day I sit here, I wonder when I come back tomorrow, where is that number going going mm -hmm. to be? And it's, 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 it's very difficult each night having to come and sit here and say, we are at this, we are at that, and it's expected to go up. I just want to, you know, I just want to, I just want to, first of all, say thank you to this team who has been working tirelessly to, to bring this. It's a, it's a tough job. Yeah. It's tough for us. Every day we come here and we come here, we come here energized in the, in the right way. And I have to tell you a story and she's going to kill me because I said it, because I'm going to tell it to you. Um, our graphic artist, Lynette Lockhart, who is responsible for all of these beautiful, beautiful graphics that you see here. She told me this morning that when I spoke to her, I guess it was about 9 o'clock, I was trying to get into the office, and I said, I'm on my way in. She says, I'm not going to be in right now. So I said, you're just getting up. She said, I, I left the office at 3.10 this morning. She left here at 3.10. I said, oh, why so late? She said, I was putting up the images of the missing people by settlement, and she said, Rome, I was, she said, I only had a few up, you know, earlier in the night, and I was tired, and I wanted to go home. She said, but then I realized... I had a duty. I had a duty to put up the photos of the <clears throat> of the missing. She says because if it were me, I'd want people to to take care of you know to look out for my family. And I you know it struck me 